there still is some considerable uncertainty. But, guys, I think the bottom line here is a lot of rain is coming to the coastline. It's just a matter of where the heaviest of the rain falls and how much of it does fall. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of question marks. And unfortunately, when you think about a landfall less than a three-day window away, potentially, you don't want the uncertainty. And so, Britta, mm -hmm. we're lucky to have you in now early say, this morning, slide too. Slide right in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's tough in these scenarios because we all want to know exactly what's going to happen. I mean... Nick, you have a tremendous amount of experience in the Carolinas, mm -hmm. and it, it's an area that, of course, is very raw emotionally. So to be in a tropical setup where we literally have a third of the models saying all three scenarios, so that's you know, a third of them saying we're going to have a landfall, a third going for a stall, and a third yeah. saying, hey, we look great in this situation. That's not what folks want to hear, but sometimes that is the reality that we're left with. I will say I know several people, many people in the Carolinas. One of the beauty, uh, the best parts of the state is you've got the mountains on the west and the beach on the east. And I know a lot of people that have homes or had homes mm -hmm. in the mountains and also on the beach. The and this could be one-two punch, unfortunately, with Helene last year and whatever happens here, we're talking about the loss of property yet again on the other side of the state. So that could be difficult for some homeowners. Yeah, and we're already talking about rain that has been felt over the last mm -hmm. 24 hours. And we've even had some flash flood reports near Boone, North yeah. Carolina, and that including flooding on roads. So infrastructure already seeing some impacts, not directly related to these tropical storms, but mm -hmm. it's wetting the soil, wetting the ground. And then you add on even more as this starts to come in. But so many questions. And Nick, I mean, you mentioned for the coast and potentially further inland. And then there's that three model split. And it's really hard to say which of all the three is going to happen right now. It seems like the consensus has been trending a little bit closer to the track out to see. I question that a touch. I think if anything, it'll be a little bit closer yeah. to the stalling. And to have, you know, us divided kind of a third, third, third as of right now with the model guidance, two thirds of those solutions are bad news. Yeah. So if you have the majority of computer models saying that we're going to have an impact of some kind, then that's what you have to err on. I, nobody wants a direct hit from a landfalling hurricane, which would go with this first scenario. But I have to say, sometimes a lingering or stalling system is even more ominous than a direct hit, because then you're talking about an intense amount of moisture, especially with how warm the waters are. Just speaking from, from somebody that's been in a stalled out tropical system, yeah. it can get quite terrifying if it stays there for too long. So I, I would say that that middle solution of a stalling system is probably my largest concern just because of the price tag and the danger that comes with that. Not to say that, you know, a land falling full blown hurricane is not a concern as well, but you can hide from wind, mm -hmm. you can get away from the coast. There's very little you can do about heavy rain. And especially when it comes to forecasting inland rain impacts and freshwater flooding, you can't identify who's going to get the 30 to 40 inches of rain if you get in type of a stalled yeah. out tropical system. You can't. And Britta knows what she's talking about when it comes to these stalled systems. She was in Houston for Harvey. And we obviously don't want to see that. That's the solution that we're showing here. That's why you're seeing that little squiggly path. And I really think, unfortunately, this is most likely going to happen because of Umberto's poll. I don't think mm -hmm. this has much of a chance because it's sort of maybe freezes as Umberto. I mean, with the high to curve. the north and Umberto in this type of a setup, um, I, obviously that's why the computer models are out to lunch. Right. We have some big players that haven't been presented in computer models in quite some time. And so that's hard to bring out a solution sure, this yeah. far out. We'll get there. Yeah. I mean, eventually the computer models will latch onto reality and we'll get there, but it doesn't leave a lot of prep time. Right, and, that, and that's the problem. If you're waiting for the forecast to be definite before you, you can't make wait. it, then you, <laughs> you have a wait. big yes. problem. So it has to be now and you have to say, what is my worst case scenario and prep for that. And honestly, the biggest player, Imelda, isn't even here yet. It's PTC9, but we don't mm -hmm. have that designation as a tropical storm. And when that happens, a lot of things could potentially get a little more certain. Still a lot of question marks. Marks.